Hey guys, Dr. Prometheus here. We are in our off season wrap up of our Bengals franchise. What happened over this live stream? We actually did end up firing the coaching staff. Marvin Lewis is out, and Corey Rainey and Dexter Dokes. And so, who we will bring in? There wasn't a lot of coaches out there I was comfortable with, but at the end of the day, we do pick someone who has some head coaching experience will be none other than former Jets coach Todd Bowles bringing over his 3-4 defense so we'll be changing over to that and we'll see what he brings on the offensive side of the ball your Super Bowl this year Atlanta against the Patriots and Atlanta by three holding off a fourth quarter comeback by Tom Brady so it's a big thing for the Falcons who were just defeated last year by a big, strong Tom Brady. We'll have to see if Tom does stay in the league. He has a couple of years still left on his contract, but at 18 years, he may end up exiting the league. As we see, Austin Hooper here was the big thing. And then Rob Gronkowski, three touchdowns. Those two guys did a lot of work in this game. And one of the main reasons why this is really a offensive struggle. But the defending Super Bowl champions going into 2018 will be the Falcons. And so we need to look at our big decisions in player negotiations. So we end up going and moving on from Jeremy Hill. We do have Mixon on the roster, which I think is a better side than Jeremy Hill. Wendell, we brought in for some depth after some injuries on the line. We're going to be moving on from him. A.J. McCarron, though, 29 interceptions in the season, and that's unacceptable. We're going to be moving on from him and Pat Sims. He's 33. Uh, Delano Hill is a young guy, 22, first-year guy out of Michigan. We do end up re-signing him for pretty much nothing to a one-year deal. Philip Gaines, Deion Jordan, those guys were brought in as some possible depth and even uh, get some spot start time, so they're not really important. Ringo, another guy's 26, he's not really going to see any starting time. Matt Fleming we brought in because the injury to Andy Dalton, he ended up not playing as uh, McCarron was able to stay healthy for most of the time. Cedric Pierman, the guy has been there since far as I can remember. We do end up signing Brandon Wilson because he is only asking for 660 k No signing bonus, and he does have some upside to him. First-year guy out of Houston. So do end up keeping him. Aaron Murray. We had Jeff Dressel coming off the IR uh, from last season, so he's a much bigger upsize. Alec Erickson, another guy that doesn't want a signing bonus at receiver, and we end up do retaining him. So going in... To the offseason, Drew Brees, of course, was number one courting stuff at the Redskins, Rams, and the Giants. But we did see Teddy Bridgewater, and we had a choice thinking if we wanted to go with Dalton or Bridgewater. At the end of the day, Dalton has still has some big guaranteed money this year. But next year, we might be making a change if some things do not happen like we want them to. But with Breeze up there as the top guy and us having the need to fill other roles, especially changing over from a 4-3 to a 3-4 defense, we need more defenders. We need to shore up our defense uh, really in the secondary and the linebackers. So at the end of the day, even after looking at some running backs as well, we end up going to make a few splashes this year with Telvin or actually Torrey Smith what was the first one and LaFell at this point will be replaceable on the roster and Torrey Smith was a pretty good upgrade from him and he's only 29 so that's a big signing there these are all the guys we did sign and we went after and the next one now is Telvin Smith and we want him the anchor the center of our 3-4 He's fast, good block shedding, good speed, good agility, good hip power, pursuit, play wreck. The guy is not a complete player, but he's not far from it. And 
In the secondary, Bryce Callahan, the former Bear, we want to play more man coverage, so we're looking for that speed and that man, a little scrappy guy, and Bryce Callahan is definitely that guy that can make some of those tough tackles in the box, some play some physical outside corner man-to-man, -man. so we end up do getting him. And now off to the draft. First round, I didn't like anything we saw. We had a need at left tackle. We had some issues at tackle all year. And so the first round at the 21st pick of the 2018 NFL Draft, we do pick James Williams out of Pittsburgh. Protect the backside of Andy Dalton. Good, good player here. Going with our second round pick. I didn't see anything I liked. We were going to go for a defender, let's say a middle linebacker that had been taken prior in the round. But after that, I didn't really see anything that needed immediate addressing. They didn't have already looked at in the later rounds in three, four, and uh, five and beyond. So really at this, this was a trade that we wanted to do to get some picks later on. In case there was a bigger corner draft or a bigger quarterback draft. So we ended up getting a third round this year, a second and a six next year from the Colts. It's a big offer. And they use it getting a left end. So we'll have to see what they do with him. And going into the third round. I saw this guy here, Paula Dixon, not a big stud over on the grade side, but still 6.8. He has some good power moves, and he is a good pick. It's going to be possibly rotation or in that starting position for that 3-4 pass rusher. We have to move a lot of plays around, so we'll have to see exactly how this roster shapes up. In the fourth round, I saw another linebacker, a guy that looked like he was a combine stud and he's quick development that's Elias Shavias and he kinda looks like the same prototypical guy that you see out of Telvin Smith he might need some work in his finesse and power moves but other than that the guy looks pretty solid you gotta give him credit that he does have some good agility his tackle needs to be boosted up a little bit if he's gonna be an everyday player but Hey, he looks pretty good. So going into the fifth round, I saw Seth Enzer out of Illinois. And he had a pretty decent combine all around. Good impact, good run block. Didn't like his pass block all that much because he'll be on the right side. But at the end of the day, it's only a 77. Excellent pick. Good impact, uh, impact block, good strength, run blocks up there. So really protecting the front side. We did have some issues over at right tackle, so we will move him over at uh, at right tackle and see how he fares. But, hey, it's a good pick. In the sixth round, Kadron Finetti here, another guy, stud, 7.62 combine report. Uh, he's a balanced guy, so he'll have to play in the middle of the defense. We already have a lot of depth there, but some young guys. And, wow, another guy that just looks great in the North Texas we had a great draft in the first six rounds so going to seventh we have back-to-back -back picks we're gonna go with Ashton Hall out of LSU pretty much a depth guy we need another running back uh, for competition but he has some speed he has some uptrigue or intrigue and some uptakes in his agility and protection of the football so in the seventh round, I do like to pick up quarterbacks. We saw this guy 6.1. He was pretty much a green across the board in his report. Not good, not good uh, throw power. But other than that, when you're looking at a guy that's a spot starter or needs to start because your starter is hurt, you need some depth. So here is our draft class. One of the best draft classes I've ever had before or during I've done YouTube. I mean, Williams is 78, Polly Dixon is 72, Chavez is 78, which we'll be looking at using him in the middle as our second middle linebacker. Enzer, Fini, which will be back up, will be a third linebacker. Hall will be up there, 
and you're the third or fourth running back. He's a 67. Like, this is absolutely amazing. I was very meticulous in my draft. I saw some players that really attacked it, and I saw some special things out there in this draft. Just not holes we needed. We needed corners. I think we needed possibly some safety help. We needed definitely some offensive line help, which we did address here in left tackle and right guard. And subsequently, we'll pick some guys that were undrafted. But logically, the right and left tackle positions were our weakest positions on the team. And we went out there and tried to address that in the draft, which is immensely, immensely good. Because these guys are going to be, just like the NFL, they're going to develop here. And we're not just taking someone else. Uh, in the free agent pool, which kind of gives you that advantage if they're already good coming out of college. So we had some uh, practice as well at the end of this live stream. We had a couple of plays here I thought were big, as this one's out to A.J. Green. These two need to be healthy between Dalton and Green to make these great plays. That is on Sean Williams. Now with Lang out here, I thought he dropped this dime. That was great. In between two defenders outside to an undrafted rookie, A.J. Manuel. And just wow, he put that in there like an absolute dime. So here is our preseason Jaguars, Colts, or Chargers, I mean, Giants, and then uh, ending with the Colts, uh, Dolphins, Raiders, Buccaneers, Saints. So uh, away home, away home, and then by week in week five, then our five or four out of our next five games are away. We do have a week eight against the Steelers. Otherwise, it's Falcons, Browns, Broncos, Ravens. Week 11, we are back at home finally for Thursday Night Football against the Panthers and subsequently go back up to Pittsburgh to play on the Steelers. Then Chiefs, week 13, Chargers 14, and then we go into 15 with the Colts. 16 Ravens and week 17 the Browns we do play the Super Bowl champions we do play some of these tougher teams that have made some strides in recent years and then we also play some some teams that I have a high note on but I don't think they're going to do all that great in the Rams twice this year and then also the Colts and that week four in the preseason was the Vikings not the Colts I knew that so I'll be combining the first week and the second week of the preseason and then the second and third together in that way so we can see some of the standouts in preseason. So go ahead and comment, like, subscribe, and I will see you guys next time. Later.